Hey guys, today I wanted to do this video on my recovery from prosmia, the issues I've been facing and maybe speak to somebody that has been through similar uh, because I don't know many people that have been through similar. So I'll be honest, part of this is reaching out because I am uh, struggling um, and I do want to let everybody know that I have fully recovered. So I've fully recovered. So there's hope for you guys out there, but I want to explain how it's made me feel and the side effects and some other things that have affected the YouTube channel. Um, so let's get into the, the sh let's do a brief introduction for those that don't know. Prosmia is basically when your olfactory nerves in your nose get distorted. They can't receive that. The smell receptor can't receive the smell or the, the detect the odor and it's not translating them into your brain that the way they should do. Um, this can be something as simple as, wow, that um, chicken in the fridge smells off and it's not off. Or it could be standing outside of your favorite bakery and wanting to throw up because not only does it smell bad, even the things that smell bad smell bad in a different way. It's not like you go, oh, that's, that's, that stinks. That it's, it's like a, a thing in your brain is telling you, hey, you should get away from this thing. This thing is dangerous to you. You shouldn't be anywhere near it. And it's like this brain is telling you, this is not good for us. Like you need to leave. I'm going to make you throw up. I'm going to give you a load of signals to get you out of that situation. So it was very, very difficult um, to do anything. I, for two years, sat inside my room with nose plugs um, avoiding every single human interaction. I couldn't go outside. Um, everything smelled like I wanted to throw up. I basically lived in this bubble in my room. Um, if my family or anyone cooked a specific type of food, I would have to at occasions often sit in the garden. I would shut my doors. I would seal myself in. I would try to not let any of the smell in. And this sounds unbelievable. But this is how it was for me. It was not sustainable. It was not livable. It was really, really difficult. And um, I had a few, obviously, problems doing that. It is very difficult to live in a way like that. It gets you incredibly frustrated, incredibly frustrated, down, depressed, and all of these things because you cannot function in society. And you might think, well, yeah, things smell rubbish. Get on with it. And what I'm trying to explain to you is that's not really what it is. And you'll just have to trust me. The frustrating part about this is there is two elements that initially got me frustrated. Number one, going to the doctors in England, they were not happy that this was a thing. They just wouldn't accept that this was a thing. They really treated me like I was a borderline loon. Um, after about one and a half years, they tried to refer me to a we'll just call it a, yeah, a COVID-19 clinic or whatever. They said I didn't qualify because I wasn't disabled from COVID. Um, but I would argue being unable to lead any form of normal life because of damage to your body is in a, some way a form of disability. And that's what it was becoming. It was becoming impossible to live. The world isn't set up for somebody that can't, eat foods and can't smell certain things without wanting to throw up it becomes very difficult also um how to explain it was i smelt myself so your own body smell will smell awful to a point where you want to throw up showering the water smelt disgusting and this was a time where we had covid masks and i had to have a mask over myself pretty much at all times and i was smelling my own smells back at myself wanting to throw up it just really wasn't good um i ended up skipping jury duty they assessed my case and were like, yeah, you can't come to jury duty because if I sit in a jury and someone's got a certain perfume on or we have to eat a certain thing and I'm just unable, like I couldn't function. And it sounds over the top and it sounds like it couldn't be true, but it was. It was one of the main frustrations why people denied that COVID exists because yes, there are many variants of COVID that didn't do much. There are sometimes you get COVID and nothing happens. There are sometimes you get COVID, you didn't know you had COVID because you had no symptoms, but you passed it on and then they got really ill because that it affected everybody differently. 
Don't want to talk about the vaccines. Don't want to get into all of that. Don't care. It's whatever, right? Um, point is, it exists and it fucked me up. So <clears throat> for two and a half years, I, without <clears throat> exaggerating, I ate the same meal of potatoes and water, occasionally Diet Coke. That was it. Sometimes I would put peppers with the potatoes and on very, very occasions, I would try some form of plain fish um, that was like peg on nose, try get it down. And then occasionally I'd have like plain protein shakes, which were still weird um, just to try get some form of protein in. After two and a half years of eating like this, um, <clears throat> I had the nose clips on and I couldn't eat anything. <clears throat> I'd lost about five stone in weight. Um, which in many ways was good because I am an overweight bloke. I don't pretend to be skinny or anything like that. It's something I wish I could change, but I have uh, certain issues and, uh, eating issues and blah, blah, blah. And it's just very difficult for me. Um, it's the one thing that does get me depressed. It's why I don't like being on camera because I don't like the way I look. And I try to be outgoing for you guys, the YouTube channel, because I think it's fun and it's an escape. But genuinely, I hate being on camera. I hate looking at myself and COVID has not helped that issue. <clears throat> so I couldn't eat anything. And there are two ways this will go. Either you can't eat anything and you're just struggling to get by on the absolute bare minimum. Basically, you're eating enough scraps that you don't die, but you constantly feel ill because you're just not getting anything. Um, and you're going to feel like death. <clears throat> That's kind of how I felt. I would lash out. I would get angry. I would break things. I would hate having the same meal three days, three times a day, two times a day. Then it became one times a day. Then it just became, I'm not going to eat today. I'm not going to eat for three days. I'm not going to eat for four days. What's the point? Um, it's very difficult. And people will like to say, oh, I could live off of that for the rest of my life. There's this one meal I like, steak, potatoes, whatever, green beans or something. That's what I could live off for the rest of my life. It's very, very difficult to wrap your head around the feeling of you're not just eating this for two years. Like if I said to you, you have to eat your favorite meal twice a day, every single day, that's the only food you can eat for two years. That would still be better because in your mind, you know, it ends after two years. If that's the only thing you can ever eat, eventually you're going to become very, very frustrated that everything is around you. There are all these options and everything is horrible. And bear in mind that you don't get to pick what food you like. So the foods that I ended up liking, which were peppers and potatoes, is not exactly the most nutritious, enjoyable meal. Plain potatoes with red peppers. That's all I could eat. And it sounds crazy, but we tried everything. And everything was like, not just disgusting, it was inedible. Nose clips, yes, I could eat certain things with nose clips, but the second the nose clip came off, it would regurgitate, it would be awful. So I just, for my own peace of mind, I stopped putting myself into a position to try and get frustrated, and I just accepted, okay, um, this is what I can eat. This is my new life. Oh, I'll try to get on with it. Um, yeah, you can do that. But then after a certain point, I just kind of cracked. Um, after about a year, it was about a year and a half, I just got to a point where I was like, I can't believe this is my life. Um, I wasn't enjoying any of it. So basically, um, I ended up going to the doctors. Uh, I explained how angry and frustrated I was and how depressed I was about like the, just the outcome of everything. Tried to explain the reason why he was a bit like... Uh, okay, bro, um, you can take these antidepressants. Didn't take them for a month because I was very skeptical about taking them, very hesitant, ended up taking them. Um, that had its own set of issues. While it did help in some regards, the anger went away. I wasn't as frustrated. Um, in some times I was better, but it would never solve the underlying issue right? The underlying issue was I had something, it was taken away. I'm struggling to lead a normal life. That's very difficult. So after a while of being on these, I felt better. I didn't feel like basically I wanted to, uh, for the 
for the YouTube stuff to not ban me, uh, commit S, let's just say that. I didn't feel like that anymore, but I didn't really feel any better. Um, so I tried to up in my dosage and then that really did mess me up. That turned me into a zombie. <clears throat> now I'm not trying to say that these pills are bad because these pills do help and they have helped in other ways. A, a lot of other ways they've helped me. But when I went up in dosage, I was just a zombie. Um, there was months where I was just in bed. I just, I just had no energy to do anything. And in a way, that's kind of what I needed because... I didn't have any energy to moan or get frustrated about parosmia, but I also was obviously having other issues that that brings. So that wasn't great. And eventually I've come off them um, as my smell and my taste has recovered. And all I can say is there are a few things that I did to help. And if you're still watching this, I appreciate it because it's not easy for me to talk about these things. It's very embarrassing. Um, I had these this smell kit of different citrusy style aroma stuff that I smell each and every day. It seemingly made no difference, but I did heal. So did it make some difference or not? Well, maybe it was just the three year period where it came back to normal, but sometimes it doesn't come back to normal. So maybe that aided um, <clears throat> my ability to come back to normal. Uh, maybe that helped in some regard. So I wouldn't knock that. Um, I took vitamin D and I took zinc and I took some magnesium. Um, and I tried a variety of different, just general top myself up with like a daily tablet. Basically what I'm trying to say is not a specific thing. I just tried to get enough in me because I wasn't eating anything. I ended up going for blood work was massively negative in pretty much everything. Um, and that's why I felt so ill, which was expected, especially protein, because I couldn't really eat anything. Um, so that was a problem. This still wasn't going away. <clears throat> they were like, listen, uh, I remember the conversation with the doctor. He said, oh, my wife had a bad smell. Um, she smelled like stuff was on fire and then it went away. And I was like, well, that's great. I said to him, because I was really mad, I said, I'm not your fucking wife, am I? So what are we going to do about it? Because at this point, I just had enough. I'd completely had enough of people denying that it existed. And people telling me, oh, well, last week, my friend got COVID. They had a bit of a dodgy smell and it returned. And I was trying to explain, listen, this has been going on years now. Uh, I need help. And they didn't really give it. Um so I then went off for multiple uh, brain MRIs because they said I could have a brain tumor. Now, that's really fun. That's not scary. So then I was not only on these depression meds, feeling fucking awful. I was then waiting to find out, shit, maybe, if I, maybe I don't have this. Maybe I've got a brain tumor. So I was waiting on this MRI. I then went to the MRI, had, had the MRI done. That was terrifying. Um, had this big box put on my head. I was locked inside this thing. I couldn't move. And I was like pushed into this machine and all these noises and beeps and horrible things were going off. And I was just in there in my own head thinking fucking hell, like, have I got a brain tumor? Like, am I going to die? Like, how shit is this? Right. And I'll never forget that feeling because that wasn't nice. And it turned out that they said like, you know, we, we, this is how it went as well. It wasn't even a smooth thing. They pushed me in the machine. It started going and I'm a very anxious person, especially with all this going on. And then they pulled me out and they're like, oh, something's wrong. You're not seated right. Four times they pulled me out. Then the fifth time they pulled me out and they were like, we need to turn the machine on and off. We need to get it going set it all up. I'm sure this will work. So now I'm like, what the fuck is this machine? Like, is this working? Have I done something? You know, what, what are they not? Did, are they seeing something on the screen that's so fucking weird that they're like, the, the, the machine isn't working. They didn't explain anything. They just, they just kept me in silence. Um, and eventually they said, all right, we're done. Get you things. Um, and you can leave. And I left and I never heard anything. It was like two months, three months, and I then had to ring and say, hi, what the hell's going on? 
what I need updates, like what what's happening. Um, they were like, uh, we've not received anything, so we just presume you're okay. And I was like, right, okay. So yeah, I was a bit like taken aback with that. So I tried the oils. We had the scan. I took some vitamins, but ultimately it was just time. It was time. And the biggest thing I can say is find the things that you enjoy eating, stick with them. And honestly, don't stress yourself out by trying a load of other stuff. People will tell you that the way to do it is keep trying other things every single day and eventually it will get better. For me, it didn't. It was just a click. It was like one day, um, I tried something. I was like, wow, that is better. What you'll end up doing is you'll end up wasting a load of money, which I did. I I wasted so much money trying to buy different foods, different products, different mixtures, you know, and you know how expensive food is. I was trying different foods every single day to try and um, find something I could enjoy. And it just got mega frustrating. So um, that, uh, that didn't really work. So I just decided to stay away from the frustration because I didn't need all that frustration. So after all this time, I can safely say that I am 99.9% back. Sometimes um, I might catch a certain smell um, and I'm like, oh my God, is it back? And um, that kind of sets me off and that gets me a bit worried because I'm always worried, is it going to come back? But touch wood we seem to be okay now now the second part of the problem which is really embarrassing to talk about but i want to talk about it because it's honesty on my youtube channel and that's what i do is i went from putting on five stone uh sorry losing five stone of weight to basically putting on about 10 stone of weight now you might look at me and think i look the same as all my other videos but this is the heaviest i've ever been in my life i've chosen very nice camera angles i don't like being on camera anymore and i have obviously all the issues that come with gaining an insane amount of weight um you know like stretch marks you've got sores you've got like just generally feeling sluggish i don't feel good in myself and then i've got people telling me hey do this do that lose this lose that and i'll tell you kind of how it happened um when my smell really returned i was rightly overjoyed and i always said to myself if my taste ever returns I am just not going to think about food because I want you to understand the position that I came from and finally been able to eat stuff. um, Like it was like a blessing. So I ate and I ate and I ate. And the issue with that is I think I developed and I've not had this confirmed or anything, doing some self psychoanalysis. I think I developed some kind of, response mechanism or some panic order or PTSD or something where like I just couldn't leave food like if I saw something and I wasn't like a hundred percent full I would eat it and this sounds crazy and it's embarrassing but this is just what ended up happening to me so for example when you've it's like the equivalent of the only thing you've ever drank in your life is water and the surrounding you is millions of different flavors. And then one day somebody says, we're going to let you try some of the flavors. You're going to go mental on all of the flavors. But the worry is that at some point you might return to drinking only water. So you're going to try and get every single flavor before you get put back in the cage so i was eating everything and i gained a ton of weight now granted the first initial bit of weight i gained wasn't like it wasn't massively heavy um because i'd lost a load of weight but to be honest i probably needed to lose that weight anyway but i gained that back and i just thought to myself well i lost a load of weight because i couldn't eat it did have its benefits covid in some ways because for once i never had cravings i never felt hungry um or should i say i never felt 
the desire to go and eat food, which is obviously, yes, it's part of a mental thing where you eat a lot. I understand that. But it took away all impulses, all desires to eat food. And that's a really strange feeling because, yeah, I could just think, well, I don't like anything, so I don't need to eat anything. And I'm full from this meal that I didn't enjoy. So, uh... I don't need to do anything else. So I was on basically like low calories, losing a lot of weight, having no cravings, completely fine. Then I obviously put the weight back on, which people would tell me, friends and family, oh, enjoy yourself. You know, you've, you've, you've had such a tough time, you know, order a pizza, order a KFC, go and get fish and chips, go with your friend to get ice cream, go you know, do this, oh, have this cake with, you know, you can eat this now. And I, in the, in your mind, you're like thinking, I don't know when this is going to go back to normal. I just want to enjoy myself and not think about it. And also with being on pills and not having a good time mentally, I wasn't about to double stress myself out about by putting myself on a diet after just being on like a horrendous three-year run of food. So I've put on a load of weight um that's not good uh it's depressing i don't like it i i'm struggling to shift it it's not as easy as just saying just eat less food i've got some issues like we're chatting about that are making that a bit more difficult i'm trying to get to the root cause of it and fix it i can say now that at least the 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 rate of the rate of weight that i'm gaining has slowed down to i'm pretty much maintaining the same weight Yes, it's a large amount of weight, but I've, I guess at least I've stopped gaining and I've managed to gain some sort of control. But this is what I'm trying to put the point across is it's not just the pre worry of COVID and then getting parosmia and all of this. It's like the post, like even after you've healed, I'm still having issues because of the things that we spoke about. Now, I'm not saying that I'm 25 stone and I am unable to walk like i'm i'm fine i'm not like morbidly obese or anything but for me i am massive uh, i don't like it and you know uh, uh, you know that comes with all of its own problems like big big ass fucking stretch marks blood you know it's not stuff that uh, you know I, I want i want but i've got it now and I guess it's just the scars of COVID, if you want to call it that, you know. I guess my excuse, the way I'm coping with it mentally is, well, there's not much you could have done about it, mate. It was just your brain. Like, fuck, like, what what else could I have done? The options were basically offing myself pretty much because that's how I felt. So I did what I needed to do to survive. And that's all I can say. So I don't like being on camera. I don't like talking about it because I think it's embarrassing. But I want people to know that, like, parosmia is real. It and some people lose a load of weight and then struggle to ever start eating again because they've got used to this like diet. Some people just keep piling on weight because parosmia, like, you know, the things that they liked during parosmia, you might think, oh, that's so ridiculous. That's untrue. It might be that the only thing this person can eat is chocolate cake. And you might think that's crazy. That's not possible. It, it is possible that there are people out there that the only food they enjoy is this really unhealthy food. And the only option they then have is eat enough of the unhealthy food to feel full, which is massive calories, or don't eat enough and feel really ill. So loads of people gain massive loads of weight. Loads of people lose loads of weight. Loads of people yo-yo. Loads of people get depressed on it. And it's only really now that I've got to a point where I think... Yeah, my taste and smells back to what it was. Now I'm going to have to just try and beat the mental effort of let's start to limit ourselves. Let's start to rein it back in. And then I'm just going to have to deal with the so-called scars of battle because of that's just what I went through. But that was the only way I could have dealt with it. If I'd have done it any other way, I don't think I'd be even sat here doing this video, which sounds dramatic, but it's it's true. Like it was an awful time. It was a truly awful time. Um, just anything. You just didn't feel human. Like even even like when, when it was COVID was over and people were like, hey, we can go out. Let's go to a beer garden. Let's go to a pub. Let's have a, a let's have a coffee and a cake and a catch up or something. Like couldn't do any of that. I couldn't do any of that. 
Um, so apart, uh, you know, so, so that's kind of how pros me was. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of why I feel slash felt the way I feel. Um, I'm not going to talk about this topic anymore because that's really all I've got to say. And it's a bit depressing to constantly keep bringing it back up. I'm honestly just trying to forget the whole thing. Um, so my smell and taste is back to normal. There are some things going a little bit better in my personal life. Um, I have kind of met somebody. Don't know where that's going, but it's always nice, nice to meet somebody and go on a few dates and have a good times with them. So that's been nice. Um, that's been a big positive over the last quite a few months. So that's been good. Um, I've started a bit of work. Um, it's not full-time paid time or anything like that. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe doing some, maybe some more work in like a charity shop, some charity work or something just to get my experience back up, help myself get back out there. Cause it's just been, it's just been a bit of a whirlwind these past three years. I feel a bit out of the loop with everything. So I'm trying to get into full-time work. Um, need to get my CV sort of done back up to scratch. So I'm doing like some charity work, some voluntary work, some bit of work when I can. <laughs> um, You know, I'm just trying to survive basically, which sounds ridiculous because, oh, what, how has this all have happened? Because you couldn't eat a bit of food. But it, it, if you understand it, you understand it. If you don't get it, then you'll never get it. Um, during all of this, during all of this scenario, the only thing that was keeping me going and fun and entertained was I was playing a specific video game. Um, and I was then wrongly kicked off playing that video game because I accidentally retweeted an image of a an ex or a, a past employee that identified as a skunk. And I didn't know they were a skunk. And then I got labeled by the whole community as this awful, disgusting human bigot. Um, and uh, I had a whole bunch of like issues with that. That was not good for the mental state. Um, I also had some weirdo stalker who still stalks me to this day. Um, just like try and in some weird way ruin my life but it, it it was like everything he said was wrong so it didn't really affect me but it's still not nice having people trying to desperately like dox and do all this stuff while she's going through this shit um having to talk to the police and submit police reports um all that kind of stuff and it was just like the past like two to three years i just kind of want to forget I'm really glad you guys enjoyed the videos. I mean, like hopefully over the past two or three, three years, I kept a brave face and you didn't really know what was going on. That's just who I am. Um, but honestly, like now that I'm out of it and I'm turning 30 soon, I don't really, I don't really care about the videos. If that makes sense. I used to have this big desire to keep making videos and, you know, be a YouTuber and all this stuff, but I don't really care anymore. Um, it put a lot of things into perspective. That's not to say I'm not going to make videos because I'm going to make videos, but the videos I make are just few and far between and just on topics I want to enjoy. Um, I understand that we had 13,000 subscribers. We get like 10 views now. Everyone's left. Look, I get it. You know, it is what it is, but that's just what I've been going through. Um, yeah, so hopefully that explains some things. So sometimes I do feel a bit down. Sometimes I don't want to be on camera. Sometimes when I'm streaming, I'm a bit tired and I'm a bit in a, um, and I'm a bit what I'd call like in a funk. Um, it's not all to do with this, but a lot of it stems from this. Um, so look, I'm just trying to get by. Just let me be me. Let me enjoy myself. Uh, I'll try to be honest and open as always. If this helped you, leave a like, leave a comment, consider subscribing. Um, but this is the last time I'll probably talk about this. Look, there's probably loads I missed, you know, like 
all the ins and outs, but I've got a few videos on the channel if you really want to dig around and find them, I'm sure you will do, that explain exactly how I got through it, but basically, it was just time. It was just time. Um, and this sounds really daft, but I feel like it's just left me quite tired. Um, I feel like I, I just need to like, whoa, I just need to like breathe and not worry about how to make a YouTube video, how to stream the best, how to do certain things in my own pri like private life. I just want to just unwind. Um, so yeah, that's it really.